Right now our robot depends on what is called ambient light to detect information uh, from its surroundings. So what that means is uh, it uses the, the light from the bulb in the room uh, to get a few light rays or photons into its detector and then uh, the more light rays that it receives the higher the value that we see on the serial monitor. Um, if it's closer to the bulb the more the higher the value will be. The, if the bulb's bright, it, the number will be higher. And if the robot's oriented towards the bulb, the number will be higher. But if any of these things are are different, if this distance is bigger, or if the bulb is dimmer, it's a low watt bulb, or or maybe it's turned off, or if the robot is I mean, let's say oriented in the direction off to the right here, it's pointed that way, then that number is going to be lower. Now while this system does give us information about the the environment surrounding the robot. It doesn't give us everything we need to know. For example, if we had a wall here, the robot simply wouldn't detect any light. Now, if the robot's not detecting light, it could be for a variety of reasons. It could be that the robot is in a dark room. It could be that the light, again, is dim. It could be that there's a wall in front of it. It's hard to say what's causing the robot to see a low value. So what we're going to do is uh, turn the system on its head by giving the robot a flashlight. And with the flashlight what it's going to do is generally register low values on the detector. It's just going to shoot light beams out in front of it and the detector's not going to see too much action. But if we come up against a wall, then what will happen is we'll, ac we'll actually get a lot of reflection. And this reflection will bounce back into the detector and we'll get some, uh, this, the, the reading will actually become higher. So as we get closer to a wall the reading gets higher and we can tell how close we are to the wall. If the reading's low we can uh, deduce that either there's no wall there or it's very far away. So this gives us uh, much more information about our surroundings so that we can actually get a uh, nano mouse to navigate a maze. The emitters may function without any coating once you wire the circuit. That's because the resistors attached to the MOSFET might pick up enough noise from the surrounding circuitry to have a high enough voltage to turn the MOSFET on, allowing current to flow through the circuit. However, the code we have right now does not allow us to control the emitters. To turn the emitters on and off, we need to define a pin to control the emitters when we first create the sensor's object. So, at the tail end of this, I'm going to put comma D3 and then I need to create the corresponding argument in the sensors class. And I'm going to call it switch LEDs because it's going to be used to switch our LEDs on and off. Then I need to create a configure function. And all this function is going to do is set that pin as an output. Then we have to call it from within the setup. Once we've done that, we can go back to the sensor's code, and at the very beginning of the sense function, we can write them high. So now our emitters are on. Basically, our robot is carrying a flashlight with it. Once the code has been uploaded to the mouse, open the serial monitor and press the button. 
you should see values flow past, and as I put my hand near the mouse this time, you'll see values getting higher for that front sensor and higher for the left sensor. Just to make sure we have control of the LEDs, let's go ahead and set this value to low now and upload the code again. Once the code is done uploading, open the serial monitor again and push, push the, the button, button. And, and verify, verify that when you put your hand in front of it, of the, the values actually, actually do go, go down. down.